But my favorite way to end this then is to just reflect on, uh, I want to do it just a fast tirade on stupid design, and uh, this will be fast. Uh, look at all the things that just want to kill us, okay? Uh, most planet orbits are unstable, uh, star formation is completely inefficient, most places in the universe will kill life instantly, instantly. The people that say, oh, the forces of nature are just right for life. Excuse me. <laughs> just look at the volume of the universe where you can't live. You will die instantly. That is not, that's, not, that's not what I call the Garden of Eden, all right? Uh, uh, galaxy orbits, that we orbit once every couple hundred million years, you're bound to come close to a supernova that will wipe out your ozone layer and kill everybody on the surface who doesn't otherwise have dark skin because your high energy rays will give you skin cancer. <laughs> um, we're on a collision course with the Andromeda galaxy. Gone is this beautiful spiral that we have. And of course, we're on a one-way expanding universe as we wind down to oblivion as the temperature of the universe asymptotically pro approaches absolute zero. That's the universe. Then Earth, volcanoes, tsunami just killed, uh, you know, I think that number's higher, up 200,000 people, floods, tornadoes. None of this is any sign that there's a benevolent anything out there. And this 90% is should be 99%, as was earlier noted, that's a, um, of all life that has ever lived is now extinct. Inner solar system is a shooting gallery, comets, uh, uh, asteroids, duck. Um, and look how long it took to make multicellular life. Not from the beginning of the Earth. Life happened quickly, but not multicellular life. Uh, you needed your cyanobacteria to sort of crank on the oxygen, get the oxygen budget going. Then you could have sort of, uh, that's sort of rocket fuel for multicellular creatures. But that took three and a half billion years. That's hardly an efficient plan with us in mind. Um, and in human beings, this is like the most tragic of them. I don't even include here the expression of free will where people want to kill each other. I'm talking about nature killing us without the help of human beings. Aggressive childhood leukemia, hemophilia, all of this, all of this. And we so much praise about the human eye, but anyone who's seen the full breadth of the electromagnetic spectrum will recognize how blind we are, okay? And part of that blindness means we can't see, we, we can't detect magnetic fields, ionizing radiation, radon. We are like sitting ducks for, for ionizing radiation. Um, we have to eat constantly because we're warm-blooded? Crocodile, you eat a chicken a month, it's fine, okay? So we're always looking for food. These gases at the bottom, you can't smell them, taste them, you breathe them in, you're dead, okay? <laughs> so I'm almost done, I'm sorry, I'm taking up your time here. So, so, and with the birth defects, most are unknown. Look at this. Others, we, it's like abuse and infection and stuff that human beings had something to do with. Here's, we have no idea. Oops, I pushed a button by accident, sorry. No idea. No idea. And, you know, and birth defects are tragic. They're tragic, particularly if they happen to the family afflicted by it. And you just look at images of these aborted feces, because, um, uh, fetuses, because of the, and most of these are stillborn. Others are born, you know, born with a heart outside the body. And so... This is all simply stupid design. And the problem is, if you look for what is intelligent, and yeah, you can find some things that are just really beautiful. And really, hey, that's a, that's a clever. You know, the ball socket of the shoulder. And a lot of things you can point to, but then you stop looking at all the things that confound that revelation. And so, so if I came upon a frozen waterfall, and it just struck me for all its beauty, I would then turn over the rock and try to find a millipede. Okay, or some kind of deadly newt, and then put that in context and realize, of course, the universe is not here for us, for any uh, uh, singular purpose. My favorite of all is, of course, you eat, breathe, eat, and drink through the same hole in your body, guaranteeing that some percent of, our, of us will choke to death every year. Okay, imagine if you had a separate hole for breathing and eating and talking, that would be just really cool, right? <laughs> it was just, you could drink, breathe, and just talk. And you would never choke, all right? And it's not, it's not a hard request. Dolphins breathe and eat through different holes in their body. And that's a mammal. So I'm not asking, I'm not, you know, this is like Santa Claus could bring this one. Um, and this one, of course, my favorite of all, like, what's this going on between our legs, right? As you've heard, like, it's, we have, and, and you've heard it. It's like an entertainment complex in the middle of a sewage system. No engineer would design that at all. 
ever. It's like the wrong juxta juxtaposition of elements. So what I want to put on the table is the fact that I don't want the religious person in the lab telling me that God is responsible for what it is they cannot discover. Because look at the hubris of that. You're in the lab and you say, I don't know how this works. And not only that, no one alive on earth knows how this works. And not only that, no one who will ever be born will know how this works. That's kind of audacious when you think about it. And then you put it down and go on to the next problem. This problem is a cure for Alzheimer's or, or cancer or whatever else. I don't want them in the science classroom. And so the issue is simply about progress and discovery.